Welcome back to the Couch Potato Show. Back again with the boys for episode 35. Got a big day. Boys, how we doing? Phenomenal. Oh, so good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to jump into today. Um, a lot of football talk, uh, a lot of baseball news with the offseason so far. Uh, a couple of big basketball headlines to get to. Um, but first, uh, we'll start off with a little review for uh, Pick'em from last week. I'll just run through it real quick. Um, everyone got a point with uh, the Packers win over the Rams. Me and Frank got a point with the Bills win over the Ravens. Um, everyone gets a point for the Chiefs win over the Browns. Me and Eric got a point with the Buccaneers win over the Saints. And me and Eric got a point with uh, Max Holloway's win over Calvin Cater on Saturday night. So that'll bring... Um, and there's like a couple of free agents that sound too. Well, yeah, but I don't think any... I got the Brantley one. That's all I can think of. Oh, that's right. And you got a point for uh, Michael Brantley. That's it, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so current score is 30 to 30 to 29. Uh, me and Frank tied up at 30, and then Eric's got 29. Um, but let's get picks for this week, uh, championship weekend in the NFL. Um, start with the NFC championship, Bucks Packers. Eric, who you got? It's a close one. I like Brady in the playoffs. How could you not? But I think this Packer team is too good, to be honest. I just think Rodgers, what he did to the Rams defense was ridiculous. He's the MVP this year, in my opinion. I got to go with Green Bay. It's uh, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a close game. I'd probably be pulling for Tampa Bay. I love Brady, but I see uh, Rodgers outdueling Brady because Brady really didn't play that well last game. He was fine. But it's really the defense that stepped up and made the plays. And I don't think you can compare Breeze in his current form and Aaron Rodgers in his current form. So I think Rodgers is going to be too much for this defense. Frank? I agree with Eric. Uh, I was going to say the same thing. Like, the, the Bucks didn't really win that game last week. It was more of the Saints turnovers and Tom Brady just converting on good field position, as he should. So I like the Packers' offense better. I think they're going to take this game and go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm going to take the Packers as well. Uh, it just seems as if Aaron Rodgers is just unbeatable right now. Uh, that that offense is just clicking better than any other team in the NFL right now. So um, hard to stop the Packers right now for sure. Um, on the other side of the uh, other side of the NFL, we have better, uh, a lot better matchup, I think. Um, Chiefs Bills for the AFC Championship game. Um, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, going out, uh, going out to Kansas City. That was going to be a great game. Uh, Eric, who you got? I'll stick with KC. Obviously, you have your injury concerns with Mahomes, but I think he'll be good. Even if he's on a stretcher, they'll put him out there in some capacity, whether it's as a decoy to chuck the ball and just constantly run it. Uh, it's, he's too good not to play. Obviously, if he's that concussed, you can't play him, but. I think it's enough time between games. Bill's got a shot. Surely they do. And it's going to be a real, it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a lot, a lot of passing this game. A lot of deep shots. But I think at the end of the day, Mahomes just going to have more connections on those deep shots because his toys are better at the end of the day. Hill's ridiculous. Fucking what's his name? Kelsey. Unbelievable. It's the Chiefs offense is stacked. I think Kansas City is going to win. Right. I'm going to agree with Eric. I was going to ask you guys if we can make conditional picks because I didn't know if Mahomes was playing. And then I started practice yesterday. Yes, so, I was like, so I was like, all right, he'll probably play if he practiced yesterday. So I agree with Eric. I'm going to take the Chiefs. I'm going to go a different route here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bills. I think, uh, I think Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and Cole Beasley – I had to find a way to use it. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, 
the both offenses have equal uh an equal amount of pro bowlers on each side. Uh, Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey on, and obviously Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs side, and then Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and Cole Beasley for the Bills. So, um, I think uh, I think we're going to get an upset in the uh, AFC. I'm rooting for a Packers Bills Super Bowl. That's what we're going to get. I don't know. It's going to be a great game uh, either way. Um, but. Uh, Tomorrow night, because we're recording this on a Friday morning. Uh, tomorrow night, we got a big fight. Uh, Eric, why don't you break down Poirier versus McGregor? Very excited. I'm very excited. Anytime Connor steps in the ring, and I don't even, I'm not even obsessed with Connor like some MMA fans are, but you can't not be fascinated with his stardom, his stock, his journey that he's been on through all of combat sports. He's the most interesting man in sports, he's fantastic. He's great. It's, you can't say much about Conor. Everyone knows who Conor McGregor is. My my mom knows who Conor McGregor is. The guy's a global superstar. And Dustin Poirier, since that first McGregor fight, has just been on otherworldly tear. And really, I believe he's lost one other fight since then to Michael Johnson by knockout. But besides that, if you just look after that fight, this new version of Dustin Poirier, this most developed version of Dustin Poirier in his prime, I think both guys are 32. So really they're both in their prime, especially in fight promotion. I think early thirties, even mid thirties might be your prime just because experience, you can't teach that. And Poirier's only lost to Habib. It's, it's just ridiculous what he does. He defeated Eddie Alvarez. He defeated Gaethje. I think Poirier is ridiculous. I think you could easily make the argument these are two out of three best lightweights in the world right now, and I'm so excited for this fight. Um, I'll start out with picks uh, for this one because I made Frank go first last time. Um, Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm going to go McGregor. Uh, Just I'm a huge fan of uh, of Dustin Poirier. and just everything, everything he's done in the UFC. Um, also, just a stand-up guy outside the ring. But uh, fuck, man, it's hard to bet against him better. It's uh, he's so good. He's so good. I got, I gotta go with Connor. Frankie, you got. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. I t- I'm gonna take McGregor. That guy is just like. I've only watched him fight a couple of times, but he's just like out of this world. So uh, the only thing I worry about is like the conditioning is a lot of people say, cause he hasn't fought in like over a year ever since he retired for like the 17th time, who knows at this point. So uh, that'll be fun to watch. See if uh, Poirier can wear him down in round four or five, but I'm going to take McGregor. I think he's going to have a better shot. Has it really been over a year now? Uh, I could be wrong, but his last fight was like last January. Yeah. It was like last yeah. was like January 20th or something. Just over a year. Yeah. Eric, I don't know what you're saying. All right. Eric, you got a pick? It's been exactly a year. Oh, okay. Yes, it's going to be Connor. Poirier is awesome. He's great. And there is more of an unknown with McGregor just because he fights so infrequently. But if he just didn't look like a world beater in his last fight, I'd be so tempted to pick Poirier. But Connor. He's just like the most innovative fighter ever also Mm -hmm. with the shoulder strikes. What's not to love? Poirier surely has a shot. The odds are two in favor of Connor, in my opinion. I think he's like a minus 280 favorite minus 290. It's really high. Yeah. So it's like, I yeah, I get it. I saw 300 somewhere and I was like, what the hell? That's really high. I don't know. It's just because... It just makes sense for Vegas. The MMA purist must, might be like, come on, man. Poirier is awesome. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But the Everyone average, loves McGregor. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to go with, Connor. Could be knocked down this first 60 seconds. Could be a grueling decision. I have no idea. Poirier's best shot might be to take to the ground, to be honest, and try to submit him. But I don't see that happening. It's going to be McGregor. It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a great yeah, it'll fight. Be fun. Um. Yeah. Which was on ABC like the last one. That was so convenient. 
right? Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. So uh, we're going to wrap up picks this week with one more uh, little uh, off the bat um, pick. There's been a lot of talks uh, in Houston about uh, Deshaun Watson wanting out of uh, out of the Texans organization. Um, he's expressed uh, in tweets and interviews that he is not pleased with how things are going there. Um, and especially after they trade away literally everybody on um, mm. the offense. So uh, I wouldn't be very happy either. Um, so we're going to sit down we're going to make picks for who we think uh, Deshaun Watson's going to get traded to. Cause honestly, I can't remember the last time it was this obvious that a player was going to get traded uh, in the NFL. Uh, I, I can't remember. There have been others, but I can't. Um, so, Frank, I'll start with you. Uh, Deshaun Watson, uh, where's he landing? I got him going to Washington. Uh, they need a quarterback. It's obvious. Alex Smith is not going to do it for them. They had. Taylor Heineke played their playoff game. He was pretty good, but obviously he was not, he's not like a franchise quarterback or anything. That defense is already really good. I think the missing piece for them to win multiple division titles because the NFC East sucks. So the missing piece for them to win division titles is probably a quarterback. And I think Sean Watson's like quarterback. So it's going to Washington. Eric? I get it. I get it. Oh, it's a fractured relationship. They hate each other, man. Yeah, freaking. There's so many examples in sports. Like Connor leaked DMs with Dana White, and Dana was like, "I'm never talking to him again." And Connor was like, "Dana's in it for the money, man." And they were like, <laughs> "Hmm, wait a minute. We kind of need each other. Like, want to be friends? Yeah, let's be. Do we just become best friends? That's what it was." And it really took this season for Watson's supporting cast to be freaking terrible for me to realize how great this guy really is. Yeah, he still had a great season. His offensive line might as well have been us three. <laughs> have any weapons. His receivers might have been us three. Yeah, seriously, man. It's fucking it, – it is ridiculous what Watson did. Even J.J. Watt was like, we should have been 12-4, and four, man. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have been. He literally apologized for wasting one of his seasons. Yeah, it's, it's a weird move, whatever. But the point is, all it takes – is one good conversation between Deshaun and the Texans. I get it. It's nuts. Because whoa, this whoa, whoa. Is- him staying was an option here? If I would, have, if I had, had that option, I would have said he's staying. I didn't know that was an option. Yeah, that's an option. Ah, oh, shit. All right, whatever. Hey, you man. Go back. Like, we, no, 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 no. We gave well, Frank- No, I think he's too valuable to trade. If I, if I knew that was an option, I would have said he's staying. That's Listen, what- we gave Frank the out on the uh, – yeah, you gave me the out the last time. Whatever I, uh, the Nate Robinson. Oh, Nate, yeah. Nate, 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 yeah, so I'll stick with it. Yeah. Besides the point, we won't post that clip on Instagram because Frank's a <laughs> we, we post every other clip on Instagram, Instagram, apparently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, point being, yeah, he's going to stay in Houston. He's too good. Bill O'Brien's out of there. Some fucking, hopefully, decently intelligent people. In the front office of Houston. Hey, that's Alabama's new uh, OC you're making fun of over there. Yeah, don't, don't slander Bill O'Brien. Yeah. yeah. I could be a good offensive coordinator at Alabama. I believe you may. Trust me. You got enough talent, so. Oh, yeah. It means, where's Watson going? Miami. Oh, no. That's yeah. so dumb. It's, I've, seen, I've seen time and time again where the guys want out. And they express interest in where a good trade destination might be. And they happen to go there. And the two of them. Two of them. You're, two you're of the one that was like, Tua should be offensive rookie of the year. Blah, listen, blah, blah. I, listen, I don't know if he should be offensive rookie of the year anymore. Uh, we need anymore. He never should have I made that. I said that before week 17. Let's just make that clear. Well, you know, that's a whole other debate. Um, the Tua thing didn't work out great in Miami. I mean, he's also still a rookie. He's also only played like eight games. Yeah, so it's hard. But a lot of people are being really hard on him. I think I think they're going to bring in Deshaun Watson just because they have the pieces to. Um, the Dolphins are in win-now mode just because of the guys they have. Um 
So I I wouldn't be shocked if Deshaun Watson ended up in Miami. But I don't think he's going to stay just because of – I think if it gets to that point, I think he's just going to step away and say, I'm not playing anymore and just retire. <laughs> I don't think he'll go that far. He's going to pull McGregor. The Paul McGregor, the Paul Gronk, where he told uh, who was that? Who's that team? Happy. I forgot what the team was. He wanted to get traded to some random team. And he's like, "Can't do that. I retired already." And then he just didn't retire. And went back to Beijing. It was the Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I'm retired. You can't trade me." <laughs> um. Alrighty. So, um, Frank, you wanna transition into? Uh, yes. Yeah, sure. So we're going to do a little bit debating. And obviously, me is not a football person in the slightest. We're going to let these two debate some football. Uh, first topic we got is Philip Rivers retired this week after a 17-year career with the 16 with the Colts and one with the Chargers. Um, do you guys think he's a Hall of Famer? What do you think? Tyler, we're going to let you go first. Oh, with the Chargers, whatever. Um, no, I'll go for it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say no. Um, just because I, there's no ring, there's no ring to show for it. Um, and for quarterbacks, uh, especially in this day and age, um, if you're not Dan Marino or, um, Steve Young or any of those guys, um, I'm sorry, Dan Fouts, cause Steve Young has a ring. Um, and then it's so hard to get into the hall without one, um, Guys like Eli Manning or eh. Um, and even then, he has two rings. So, um, and two Super Bowl MVPs. Yeah. I don't see Phillip Rivers as that much better than Eli Manning. Phillip Rivers also had arguably the greatest tight end of all time with him. Uh, Phillip Rivers also had uh, arguably the greatest uh, season out of a running back ever. With Ladanian Tomlinson, um, so he also he had a lot of help, um, and he's playing in an age, unfortunately, with Peyton Manning, with Tom Brady, with um, all these guys in the AFC, Ben Roethlisberger, um, that kept him from really going to any Super Bowls or doing any of those things, but. I think if you want to be a Hall of Famer, you got to at least beat one, beat one of those guys at some point in your career. And he just didn't do that. So I'm going to say no on uh, on Phil Rivers. Eric, what do you think? Listen, if I had to vote, I'd vote no. I agree with everything Tyler said. However, it's not that easy. A lot of his uh, perception thing, you know, oh, he's a father of nine. He says, what does he freaking say? Goddamn, whatever's catching him. Yeah, yeah whatever. Oh, he's so he's so quirky. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He'll throw an interception or two, but ah, he's lovable Philip. Yeah, come on, he's a country guy. He, yeah. he so and I'm serious too. It's all about perception, and he's gonna get in the Hall of Fame because of that perception. Ridiculous, stupid, but welcome to the NFL, people. It's a joke. He's gonna get in the Hall of Fame. I wouldn't vote him in. I, I he's not a Hall of Famer, but he will get in the Hall of Fame one day. I guarantee you. Um, okay. So I now I got I want you to debate. I got a debate topic for you. Um, do the Yankees need? I say need in all emphasis. Do the Yankees need to pursue Masahiro Tanaka? I know it's a, I know it's a want, but do they need to? Frank, go ahead. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a need. I think there are other options out there, especially because the Yankees have said time and again, which I hate because, but you know. They said time and again that they won't go over the luxury tax. By some people's estimation, they maybe have like five to ten million left before they go over the luxury tax. And Tanaka is just asking for fifteen to twenty. So I don't think it's realistic. The other options out there: one was Joe Musgrove before he got traded to the Padres because the Padres want to pick up every pitcher in the major leagues. Apparently, uh, another option is uh, Jamison Tyone, who's kind of sucks, but that's fine. Uh, Luis Castillo is another option. He he asked for too much. They asked for Glaber Torres, which I don't think they'll do. Uh, there are other options out there. Uh, Tanaka, love Tanaka. Top top three Yankee before before the season, so in my opinion. But uh, I, I don't think it's in the – I don't think it's going to happen. Eric? I don't know. I'm a bit more on the need side than Frank is. But, I, you know, 
it is what it is. I just think they need more proven pitchers in their starting rotation. I think they're going to have a lot of young guys. I don't know, you know, Michael King's fine, but, you know, Jordan Montgomery, yeah. I don't know. They have a lot of tendency to believe in their young guys for some reason, like Clark, King, Monty, Davey Garcia. It's like, you know, and then you have guys – we'll talk about – I'm sure we'll talk about it at some point, but then they just signed Corey Kluber, who's always injured. Uh, the only reliable starter on that rotation is Garrett Cole. And you're not going to win a playoff series with one pitcher, basically, because they've tried it before. They've tried it several years in a row. But Unless the name is Madison Bumgarner, you're not winning a playoff series yeah. with one pitcher. Uh, I, don't I, don't, know. I don't think you can bank on the Yankees getting to knock out. I just think the asking price is too high. I think it's more likely that he goes to plays in Japan at this point because he can get way more money in Japan than he can here. Absolutely, yes. And he'll be a god there. He'll have a one point six. Yeah, they CRA. worship him. Not, he can even have like a decent season. He can still have like a 3.5 ERA and they still think he's like a guy. So, you know, I, I don't think it'll happen. I think they, I think Brian Cashman makes like a BS trade for like Jamison Tayo and or like some no name pitcher that like actually pitches decently because he has a tendency to do that. But I saw we yeah. signed some, some guy from the Orioles yesterday. But I was like, okay. Yeah, Walk Dushevsky or something. 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 Some name I can't pronounce. I remember him when he pitched last year. He wasn't that good. We, yeah, we, uh, we battered him when we played him, so. Glaber battered him. <laughs> Glaber batters the entire Orgel staff. Yeah. All right. Well, in honor of Tyler, I got to ask, should Colin Sexton be in the most improved player conversation this year for the National Basketball Association? What do you think, Bama boy? Absolutely, fucking lootly. Bro, you, you literally can't tell me not. Like, you literally can't disagree with me here. Colin Sexton is one of the most improved NBA players, and I think he is the most improved NBA player so far. Now, we're only how many games into the season? 15? 15-20-ish. Yeah, 15-20, depending on what team you're for. Um, so there's, it's a very small sample size for what we've for what we've got slated for the rest of the season. But the Cavaliers have – Improved immensely on defense, mostly in part because of Colin Sexton. Um, he's pretty much there. He's, I think he's averaging 30 a game. 27. 27? 27. Yeah. That was about right. Um, close. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the kid's an animal. Um Last uh, the other night went off for uh, forty plus against the Nets big three, which and shut them down uh, in the big three's debut. So it's because Kyrie took like thirty shots. Well, they all took like eighty five shots each. Yeah, it's stupid. That's why. Well, you know, different dude. Um, but I mean, no, but still, Colin Sexton was draining threes left and right in overtime. Um, and I mean, there was just no stopping him. I mean. Kyrie was on him like like glue and just couldn't couldn't guard him. Uh, Joe Harris was on him like glue and he was still draining threes over guys. Um, I think I, I think he's been pretty good in the past, but just not taking that next step. I think this year he's taken that next step and he's showing that the NBA that he can be a superstar. My turn now. What do you think, Frank? I think he's in the running, which is the question. So my answer to the question would be yes. I don't think he is the most improved player, though. I think I think Christian was the most improved player far and away. I don't think I, Colin Sexton's having a great year. Obviously, he's shooting, he has twenty seven points a game. He's shooting fifty percent from three, which is of course is incredible. But when you look at Christian Wood, the guy has increased his scoring by let me look over ten points. He's getting more than four rebounds increased from last year. And he's, he's a star for that team. He's an all-star this year, in my opinion. If the season end, if the all-star break was right now, he's an all-star. I don't think Colin Sexton is an all-star in, in the East. I think it's a tough league for guards. Um, Chris, it's Christian Wood. It, I, Colin Sexton could even be third behind Chris Boucher because he's having six man of the year type of year. He's increased his scoring by ten, over 10 points. He's shooting about the same from three point that, that Colin Sexton is. And he's doing it in, in way less minutes than he is. So, I don't know. I would put Colin Sexton third, but he's having a great year. I just don't agree with Tyler. You also have to take into account that Christian Wood is superhuman now because he did have the Roni 
well, you know, he is superhuman, but he does still play in the NBA, and he still is most improved player. Uh, it's, a, it's like a it's like a little asterisk for me. I mean, banging on trash cans. This is, this is not the 2017 Astros World Series ring, okay? It's still. Yo, Hank Aaron died. Oh, yeah, died. I thought we were going to talk about it, but. I didn't know. Neither. Yeah. Terrible. You guys, man, you guys are boys. No, man. Yeah, rip. I once shook his hand, and I thought my hand was going to fall off. That's probably the best tribute I could give. He is, <laughs> He's got a solid grip. This guy's forearm and just his frick. Oh, my God. This guy was <laughs> cliche, but he that man was built different. He really was. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a great man. Good guy, too. Such a shame. I, th- I think he'd still be the freaking home run leader for those folks. They were gone. He's, he's my home run king. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's debatable. Again, it's like that what if, like, you don't really know how many Barry Bonds hits if he doesn't, you know, shoot up all the time. So. Luckily, we have a solution to that. You know, don't stick needles up your ass, but whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's not very hard. Yeah. Different I've, era. I've been able to not do that, personally. I can say that I have, too, so. Frank, how about you? Steroids or no? Look at me, Eric. Do you think I'm on steroids? Absolutely. <laughs> you look you look jacked these days. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, always jacked. All right, uh, so we're, at least we're passing about 66% of, our, of the show is not on steroids. So we're, we're doing a good job. That's not but, bad. Yeah, you know, in Alabama, that's the average test score for most of the tests. So. All right. So you fucking. <laughs> so rude, Frank. So rude. I can be rude. Tyler's rude to me all the time. It's fine. Honestly. Um, yeah, 755 home runs. Second all time, only to uh, the shooter himself, Barry Bonds. How many does he have? I forget. Sure. Seven seventy-two. Seven seventy something. I forget what it is. That's right. Seven seventy-two. That's a total guess. I think. Yeah. So he probably would be the home run king still if it wasn't for Barry. Although Barry did have a few productive years in Pittsburgh. Seven sixty-two. Seven sixty. Seven sixty. Close enough. Very close. Listen, Barry, Barry was very productive and no doubt a phenomenal baseball player. But 755 seems like an unbeatable record. Unless you're, uh, unless you're on steroids. He was productive the same way Enron was productive, you know? The same way Hulk Hogan was productive. These guys, they're yeah. all cheating, you know? Same way A-Rod was productive, too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Maguire, Sosa, A-Rod. Oh, they're a disgrace now. I feel bad for them. Because, you know, it's a different era. I don't know. It's a different era, but at the same time, you, you can't you can't look past it. So, um, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you, but I, I don't know. I think it's like, if you want to question his home run crown, sure. But, like, to not put, like, Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame is just like, come on. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's a different story. I I think I would put Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame. Um, like he might have like done roids and stuff, but like you can't deny like the raw power that he had. So, what's the definition of raw? Isn't that like you know he should have raw power? Yeah, yeah uncooked. Right? Yeah, yeah, he was cooking, buddy. Right in the arm, he was cooking. It's, it's not raw power. I, I I would. Put he was dude. Day. Look at his look at his days in Pittsburgh before he, before he did it. He was still he was skinnier than me, and yeah. he still hit bombs. That's raw right. power. Frank, it takes a lot of confidence not to juice up and not to cheat and not to cut corners. It takes a lot of confidence and self belief. He didn't have that confidence and self belief. So for me, but yeah, I'll put him in the Hall of Fame, whatever. But yeah, I don't think he's in the top fifty hitters in MLB history. Honest to God. 50. I put him at like. Well, are we talking overall hitters or just power hitters? Overall hitters. I put him at like top 30, probably. I don't know. Especially because of the steroids. Honest to God. That's. I'm. Listen, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. God bless you. But come on. You can't. In terms of power hitters, I think he's got to be top 20, at least. It's it's impossible to measure. It's impossible to measure. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like the impossible what if. You never really know. 
Yeah, but it and that leads you into so many other conversations. Like, oh, what if Babe Ruth played today? You know, it's all so much. Or so what much if Babe time. Ruth juiced? How many home runs would he hit if he was juiced? And... Yeah, the guy would have hit 900 home runs. Well, I'm not, I'm not disputing that he shouldn't have the home run crown. I don't think he does. I think every real baseball fan says, like, Hank Aaron's is still a home run king, but I think he's still a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Same way I think Roger Clemens is a Hall of Famer, even though he juiced for a while. I, I think he's just, I think he had too good of a career. But where do you draw the line, though? You know, like, uh, you think A Rod's a Hall of Famer? No, because he's done it multiple occasions and got suspended several times. But see, you're you're weighing the same thing against A Rod. Well, he did multiple times. I guess because it. he got punished for it and then he kept doing it. I don't know, man. I don't know because at the end of the day, it's, it's only illegal if you get caught, Eric. Yeah, and both of Clemens and Barry yeah, got they got caught after their careers. It doesn't matter. I don't know. It's like exactly. So you're penalizing A Rod. Because his, I put it. I'll, I'll put A Rod in the Hall of Fame, but it's just just like Bonds and Clemens. I think that his stats don't mean as much. Obviously, like I'll still put him in the Hall of Fame because he was still a great player. But well, it's a different answer then. And then I then I have nothing to dispute then. Yeah, I just I just think like whenever you talk, it's the same way for Bonds and Clemens. Like if you ever talk about A Rod and you talk listen to anyone talk about A Rod, I'm like, he was a great player. I'll put him in the Hall of Fame, but I don't have any respect for him anymore. But do you have respect for Barry? No, but I'll still put him in the Hall of Fame. Okay. No, no, no. I just want to make sure. Because A-Rod, it's not fair to A-Rod to say, like, oh, he got caught. But, like, he's playing in a time where it's more effective. You know, for all we know, Babe Ruth could have been on steroids. They didn't even know what that was back then. No, nah, he was on every alcohol and cigarette you could buy. The natural way. I could yeah. respect that. Yeah. Ask anybody. When I see, Whenever I see A-Rod on my TV, because he seems to have every TV show in the world now, I'm like, oh, there's A-Roids again. I love Alex. He I, was I think at the inauguration, bad. wasn't he? What'd you say? I think he was at the inauguration. Yeah, because J-Lo was there. J-Lo performed, so he was there. Terrible performance by J-Lo, by the way. I didn't no, even watch I it. I watched like the first. I was very disappointed. She sang a Kami song. It was awesome. Everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> watched. I watched like the important official part. I didn't watch any of those stupid performances. Um, then, you, then you have like Garth Brooks, like, everybody sing with me. And no one's like saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they could have, but they had mask. masquerading. Fantastic. I love it. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I guess kind of covered it already. Um, Yankees signed Corey Kluber this week. Um, just shortly after we uh, stopped recording last week's episode, one year, 11 mil. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, see if he stays healthy. Um see it. We covered it. it. Happened during our show last week. DJ LeMahieu, six years, ninety million dollars to the Yankees. Um, earlier this week, George Springer to the Blue Jays, six year, uh, one hundred fifty million dollars. Um, big deal for the Blue Jays. Michael Brantley resigned with the Astros. I forget exactly the amount. Two years for. 32, I think. Sounds close, yeah. Now I'm going to Google it. It's going to piss me off. Um, and then football news. Uh, Dwayne Haskins. Uh, yeah, two years 32. With, what was it? Two years for 32. So 16 per year. Nice. Matt. Very good, Frank. That was very quick of you. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dwayne Haskins signs with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's an interesting signing, actually. Cause I like it. Is Big Ben done then? No. Just same way, same way uh they signed the Saints signed uh Jameis Winston and well now Drew Brees is done, but at the time he wasn't done. So I think but I think Big Ben can start and you know see where it goes. I don't think Dwayne Haskins is gonna start for them in any capacity, but I think he's a solid quarter uh, backup quarterback. I guess. Yeah. Well, no, it's kind I of mean weird. usually usually those are the signings you kind of wait to make until like closer to the draft because then you have an idea of what you're doing. I guess the Steelers are just – they're just going to say, hey, we got Dwayne Haskins as our backup. We're just not going to go quarterback in the draft. What pick do they have? Well, it's late because they made the – It's got to be late because they were really good. So, I don't I, – I wouldn't go quarterback for Arizona. I mean, the, it's a pretty quarterback-heavy draft, so you can kind of get a quarterback uh, 
Unless you have like someone say, say like what are they like? I don't know, twenty eight, twenty nine or something. If Mac Jones is there, then I'll take Mac Jones. Like twenty. It's very yeah, it's early twenties. Early twenties. Yeah. Um, I take that bet then. I wouldn't draft Mac Jones that early. If I had like, say I was like I don't know, like the Chiefs. Like I could still totally see the Chiefs taking with like their, their last pick in the first round, taking freaking Mac Jones. But it's all about what you need. You know, it's less important about the. Uh... Where you're picking, it's, it's what you need. But I, understand. I don't know. I have a different draft philosophy. I think you just take the best player available because there's so many times where you like draft to need and the guy just sucks, and then there's like so many players better ahead of him or behind him. So yeah, I, no, I, I, I would draft to, to best players. Yeah, reasonable philosophy, really. Unless it's like, unless, unless you have like, unless you're like have the Chiefs and you have like Patrick Mahomes and you have like the third pick, like you're not gonna take a freaking quarterback. In the third yeah, pick. yeah. You you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I mean. Because, like, my Timberwolves are the best example because they're idiots. Uh, they drafted, like, a few years ago. This is a long time ago, so it's kind of a bad example, but whatever. They drafted, like, Johnny Flynn and Ricky Rubio instead of Steph. And it was just, like, because we needed, like, a combo guard or a, a point guard. And at that time, Steph was, like, can't be a true point guard. Not, not this is Ricky players. Rubio, bro. Dude, Ricky Rubio blows. Oh my bro, God. he was a good player. Dude, you know, you saw me on when we did the draft special. How pissed I was they, they traded back for Ricky Rubio. Guys, do you think Rubio, Rubio deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? I do. He's no, he can, he, can, he can go back to Spain and be in a Spanish Hall of Fame. How dare you, Frank? My God. You're paying him $17 million a year to sit there and be injured. It's ridiculous. I'll take that deal. That's disrespectful. I, I can get Frank. injured. Yeah, Timberwolves should just trade everything. They're terrible. After all that man did for your franchise, that is did nothing. We didn't win crap. Very well, but he, he left, and you know I don't want him back. I don't I don't need that kind of money on my freaking books. But we're a bottom five team in the NBA. I want that kind of money. Hey man, not everyone could be as smooth of a franchise as the Knicks are. What are you gonna do? Don't even get yeah. start freaking Knicks. Eight and eight, baby. Uh, <laughs> nice the sad part is they're eight and eight, and they're like what are they like the sixth seed in the East or something right now? Eight. The eight seed. Oh, they're the eight seed that went down. Yeah. Still though. Nice job, uh, Steph. It only took you eight minutes to score. Good job. <sighs> Guy's trash. It's the Tibbs effect, you know? That defense is, you know. Yeah, defense is out of this world. It's ridiculous. The problem is, midway through the year, your entire team's going to be injured because Tibbs plays his starters like 40 minutes a game. Yes. It's yeah, very so that's good. the problem. But, you know. It's all right. Terrible. Um, breaking news uh, from The Athletic. Uh, oh, Austin Romine. One year deal with the Cubs. Oh, go back to the Yankees, Austin. Big news, massive news. Guys, do you think he's a Hall of Famer, Austin Romo? <laughs> you think so? I don't know. Listen, if there's a Hall of Fame for backup catchers, Austin Romo would be. Austin Romo would be in it. I don't know. It's but he was with good. the Yankees, best backup catcher in the league. Not even capping. Oh, you're they not even go. capping? You, you must be business then if you're not even capping. Mm. Eric's been no capping this entire episode. Very good, Tyler. That was, that was, that was Yankees good. cap is terrible. Yes. Although yeah. they don't really have a cap. True. Who's got the best cap in sports, guys? Who's got the best hat? You oh, the throwback, oh, throwback. This is a pilot. question. Uh, are we talking like alternate or like regular? No. Just like straight up standard hat. Do helmets count? No, caps are the hat. Yeah, yeah. What do you know? I would say Marlins. I don't know. I like their hats. You know what? I don't hate the answer. I probably wouldn't have went there, but Marlins are uh what was a good one. Loki the Reds one's kind of nice. I don't know. That's kind of a cold, that's kind of a hot take, but I Maybe like it. Remember the, the bias in me. You remember, the, you remember the throwback pirates ones? No, I don't. Oh, the striped ones? Yeah, the big ones that had like the like the yellow pin. The white stripes on them? The, oh, the yellow Yeah, yeah, those were nice too. I like those. Eric, what do you think? Yan- you're going Yankees? I think that's a little, you know, that's it's a good answer. Biased. But I feel like you could wear a Yankees hat. Like, if someone showed up to my wedding in a Yankees hat and a suit, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I get it. Tyler, we have to do that. Not no, just, dude. It, yeah, <laughs> it's more that, yeah, my wife not, might not feel that way. <laughs> Screw your wife. I don't care. Hey, whoa, what do you want to do to my wife? <laughs> All right, all right. We're going off the rails here. We're going this off is why to the way. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We have fun on this show. Don't worry. Clip that. That's a whole clip right there. 
Um, I guess that'll do it for this week. Oh, one episode. I think best guys. If there was a podcasting hall of fame, you think this episode <laughs> would make it? <laughs> you think so? I think if there was a would. podcast hall of fame with three idiots from the northern New Jersey area. I think we. we I still don't think we make. I still it. Don't think so. No, How no, specific no. do the parameters have to be for us to be? There? With the name, right. with the name potato in the name, maybe would that get us in? I feel like we'd be on the ballot, but I don't know if we could. Uh, go it would be an place. honorable mention if it was. If it was, uh, if we had to have the the word the word potato in it, I think we would be an honorable mention. Okay. Yes, me too. Me too. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this week. Um, shit, I don't even know what's going on next week. Super Bowl, maybe? Is that next? Oh, that's it's not time. next week, dumbass. I don't know. I don't pay attention. Oh, you should try paying attention. Like fucking that's Eric over here. Get your head Eric out of here. falls man. asleep in the middle of episodes. What the hell are you talking about? What do you mean fall asleep? I was looking down on my phone. Check the video, me? Eric. Anyone who thinks I was sleeping in that video? <laughs> you, come on. Come on. Look. Wait, look. Am I sleeping? I don't know. You look a little sleepy. Am I sleeping? Eric, what it looks like it. What you saying? No, I was not sleeping. Looks like it. I don't know. Who fell asleep? Oh yeah, call me Mike Francesa. What do you want to do? <laughs> That's true. Oh. When did you fall with Sweeney fall? Marty? Oh. You know. I think he fell asleep in one of the middle of his shows one time. Yeah, oh, there's a guy. Nights. There was a guy that uh, on the Michael K show they they called him. I I think I sent you guys the, the link to it. They called him up and he was asleep. Yeah, he was he was driving his he was in his truck. Like, yeah, caller called in and they picked him up and he was asleep. They go, what happened? <laughs> That's so good. They're always a little sleepy. That's a Sweeney Murdy interview. Best interview of all time. Yeah. All right. For the third time, uh, that'll do it for this week. Um, next week, uh, we're working on a potential uh, big uh, collaboration going. Massive. Definitely. It's a massive collaboration. Hall of Fame level collaboration. <laughs> this, this will get us in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. This will push oh. us over the edge. Yeah, for sure. Right. Not for not first ballot. It's gonna take a couple of years, but we'll get there. That's fine. We are also uh, currently in the works on a uh, forget the fucking Hall of Fame. We are working on a national championship level interview. Oh, hint. Yeah. So look out for that. Um, but yeah, we'll see you next week. Adios.